So dudes, my name is Greg, and sometimes I play Rainbow Six Siege, and in this video, I want to talk a little bit about optics, and this is a question that I get from my Twitch streams a lot, is why do you use this kind of optic on this kind of gun, and vice versa? I've done a video on this, you can check out the info card on the top right corner of your screen, that's a little bit more formatted and sort of talks about the methodology of why I decided to stop using the ACOG scope on, on most of my loadouts. But I made that video talking about the ACOG before they added a whole bunch of new sights to the game. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter. And it should come down to you. The choice should come down to your personal preference nine times out of 10. <laughs> If you're new to PC gaming, you should consider taking a look at Apex Gaming PCs for your first entry-level pre-built rig if you want to get a pre-built. This is the Siege Station. If you check out the link in the description, you will get the Gregor code pre-applied for a discount starting at 800 bucks. For all of the components that you see here, you can obviously mix and match to your heart's content. It can run Rainbow Six Siege at upwards of 144 frames, which is a pretty big deal because we're going to be talking a lot about aiming in this video. And if you were looking to just support the channel in general, a portion of all sales for the Siege Station also go directly to me. So if you'd like to get a high quality pre-built PC, check out the link in the description. Another reason why this topic is so controversial is because of leak play. A lot of professional Rainbow Six Siege players have unorthodox and not so unorthodox means of playing. Some players prefer to just use the ACOG on the Type 89 on Habana because it's like, it's the highest magnification. I can just sit. I'm on single fire. Oh my God, that was bad. A lot of people will run an ACOG on the Type 89 and play a little bit more passive because of the higher zoom magnification. I hate it here. A lot of people will run the ACOG and not play passive. Sometimes I'll run the ACOG and then use the angle grip, which I have on right now. Uh, like Shiko, and they'll just, they'll just fucking, like, just fucking, you know, go, go crazy with it. There are definitely players out there that have the mechanical gun skill to use certain types of optics, even at their highest magnification level, and their mechanical aim is good enough to the point where it doesn't really impede their ability to frag. The reason that I tend to use, uh, lower magnification scopes on guns in Rainbow Six uh, is really because it doesn't affect my FOV. But this is an important aspect about aiming in FPS games uh, that doesn't really get talked about much because now there's so many options in terms of scopes, there's so many variables and it's like, oh, I don't wanna screw it up. I don't wanna use like the suboptimal loadout. I wanna make sure that I'm, you know, min-maxing all the da 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 da. N none of that matters if you don't have good enough mechanical gun skill to really take advantage of that, if that makes sense, right? I want to make a very important point, uh, because this is the vibe that I get a lot whenever this question is asked during my Twitch streams. I get the vibe that a lot of people who ask these kind of min-maxing questions are looking for a very immediate solution to a problem that they are encountering in the game, and they think that, oh, wow, you know, if I just use all of the settings and I use all of the attachments that the best players are using right now, uh, then I can like copy, you know, I can get some of that, right? Like they're, they must be doing something right because they're professional players. And that's just, that's just how it is. I should just, you know, do what they do try to emulate them. And, and to a certain extent in any kind of sport, there are certain characteristics of emulating somebody at the highest level level of their craft that is useful. But there are also some points at which you can go too far. For instance, if any of you played baseball or know anything about baseball, you know that every baseball player has a unique kind of stance, a unique kind of batting stance, and a unique kind of, every pitcher has a unique kind of windup. Not everyone has the same, right? Because everyone's body is built different. There's all different kinds of characteristics that feel more natural when you're holding a baseball bat or when you're trying to throw a baseball as hard as you possibly can. Just because Craig Kimbrell is a successful uh, professional Major League Baseball pitcher doesn't mean that if I want to be a baseball pitcher as well, I have to emulate his 
whatever that whatever that is every professional player uses a variety of different loadouts attachment combinations scopes whatever blah 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 with different guns and those are all individual decisions that they have made that they have figured out for themselves but the way that you ultimately figure it out uh what is going to work for you and what's not going to work for you is just doing what i'm doing right now i do not like running the acog on the type 89 uh, the, the, the highest level of magnification that I will feel comfortable using on the Type 89 is the 1.5. Now, if you go back through some of my older videos, you'll notice that there were some instances in which I did use the ACOG. And I, you know, I didn't necessarily play worse because I was using the ACOG. But once I started using the Hollow a lot more, um, I realized that I just felt more comfortable in gunfights with it. And the reason that I feel more comfortable with the hollow is uh, a little bit to do with the Type 89's unstable recoil. The Type 89 has this bizarre tendency to randomly kick at certain points to the like the top right side of the screen. It's it's a variable. It it's a random effect that's a part of the Type 89's horizontal recoil pattern where it'll just kind of like jump to the right. And I can duplicate it here. See, from where I was firing here, you can see the bullet holes. When I wasn't using any recoil control at all, sometimes it'll kind of go up in a straight line to the right and not really deviate that much. And then occasionally you'll get a shot that just goes like here for some reason. And then you can kind of see it again. Like the deviation here isn't that far. The deviation here is a lot farther. I personally don't want to rely on a gun in, in, in an FPS game on full auto from long range with an ACOG having to like account for a random bit of like, eh, eh, eh. like that's just, that's just frustrating to me. So I just, I just run the hollow site and then at the ranges that I'm going to be gunfighting anyway, the type 89 is actually a pretty decent gun at close range. Like it, it, it's not incredible, but it has a high enough fire rate to get headshots pretty reliably. And that little bit of, like, right side deviation doesn't happen enough at the close ranges you're going to be fighting with the hollow to really affect it. But this is literally just, this is, like, my personal, this is my personal preference, and I'm just explaining the rationale behind it. There are plenty of people who use even the ACOG with the angle grip on this thing, and they just gun the hell out. And that's great for them. Maybe that's you. Maybe that's you as well. Maybe you should, you know... Just go into a tea hunt and do it a whole bunch of times and just try to go through it as fast as you can and control your spray better than me. You literally have to just hash it out. That's, that's all I'm really getting at here, right? You will never going to know what is going to work and what's not going to work unless you practice with it. Picking something up and then just consistently practicing with it again and again and again until you get the physical memory of it down to a point where it's, you know, you can you can replicate it. That's what that's what is ultimately going to work. Any FPS player can pick up any kind of like there's going to be certain points at which they might be more suited to certain kinds of roles, like more passive player, more aggressive play. So you might want to pick up a longer range scope if you're playing more passive. You might want to pick up a one-time scope if you're playing more aggressive. But at the end of the day, your your brain's not stupid, right? Like, it's, it's not just going to not adapt to stimuli that you continue to give it. It's a little more difficult to just write a script and go like, well, these are the advantages and disadvantages of the red dot versus the reflex. The reflex has a smaller sight picture, which means the red dot zoom doesn't zoom the way it zooms most I, sometimes i don't you like th this it's all all of that is is complete nonsense unless you take like 20 minutes 30 minutes i don't know i don't know what you're trying to do with your life i don't know if you want to play a competitive siege for a living or if you just want to win more in ranked but siege is a sweaty game and you're you're not going to have a distinct advantage over people at a certain point elo wise you're going to hit like plat three or plat two like I did, thinking that you had nuts gun skill because you played a lot of CSGO. And then you're going to be like, oh shit, there's a lot of people here that are putting in a lot more work than me. 
and and that's you know that's that's really what it's about right like it's just a assertion of how much time you're willing to commit to 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 arbitrary numbers in in a video game right like if you don't know what to do right like you have no idea of what kind of site you want to use it's like oh well you know this i saw this player use that scope or i saw this player uh he had the uh, foregrip on the mp5 and he wasn't using the angle grip on 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 malusi but then uh th the other player was also using malusi and he had an angle grip so i don't know what to do gregor please answer my question please i don't know ah! it, it's not that complicated you're you're stressing yourself out and you don't need to just play t hunt just do this just do this a whole bunch and be like, eh, I don't know if it's really is what I'm, I don't know if I'm feeling it. Uh, you know, like this gun kicks a little bit more than I kind of like, or I don't really like the angle grip on this gun because I feel like it has too much whatever, right? Like it's all, you're, you're not going to find out unless you just play T-Hunt. One reason that a lot of people will sometimes not use the 1.5, even though it's available on certain guns, or they won't use the ACOG or the two times or whatever. Consistency. Consistency and muscle memory when it comes to FOV lengths in Siege is overcomplicated just a little bit for my taste. But it is an important thing that doesn't really get talked about much whenever somebody asks, Why are you using this optic? Let's say you have a lesion slash mute player who usually anchors, but sometimes they'll go for a top floor roam if the team needs it. That's my personal example. I play a lot of mute and lesion. Mutant Legion have access to a 1.5 times scope on their MP5 and their T5. And some people still use the hollow. They don't use the 1.5. And some people look at that and they think that that's, uh, that's literally just throwing, right? They're like, why would they just not use this advantage? The, the zoom, more zoom better. More zoom better. Make gun go, go boom easy more. N no use. High zoom bad. Right, like that's that's kind of the the thought process behind it, and and more zoom is good, more zoom good in in a lot of situations, but there's also more zoom not so good in a lot of situations. Re like there's already a little bit of zoom, there's already a tiny tiny amount. It's not a lot, but it's still there. Here's the 1.5. That's that's a lot. That's the difference between, you know, if I'm ADSing into a room. And I'm not paying attention, right? There's a guy over here. Let's pretend that, right? I let's say I slice the pie incorrectly here, and I go, Duh. I like I look too shallow when I slice the pie because I'm anticipating someone over here, and I go like that, and then I'm dead because I don't see the guy over here. But peek with a hollow sight. Oh, what the hell? Right? Like it just it it it, it covers up for some mistakes. In some instances, when you're playing more aggressive, and what happens when you play more aggressive, you end up taking more unexpected gunfights. So, like angled grip, uh, lower zoom, lower magnification in Siege, these are all things that, if you play a lot of Call of Duty, you'll remember that the meta in Modern Warfare, if you play a lot of Modern, Modern Warfare, the meta in Modern Warfare for gun attachments is high ADS. And that's it. Like, try to make the gun as fast as possible. ADS as fast as possible, and usually not a lot of zoom because it, it, it makes it difficult to see what's, what's around you. Now, if I'm holding an angle, this is nice. I'm, I'm okay with this. But if I'm not, suddenly, maybe it's not so nice in some situations here and there. Literally, the only way that you're going to know, the only way that you're going to get used to the difference in in fov and kind of accommodate that and not you know like you'll build up habits with different optics levels which is why a lot of professional players will tend to just stick to one type of optic level and just and just hash that out and just work on that again and again again that's not everyone some players can do a lot of different things usually if their mechanical skill is just fucking crazy enough for them to get away with it um like, look at Shroud, right? Like, Shroud is an example of a guy... It doesn't matter what kind of gun you give him, right? Like, he can melt people. He can just, he can just shit on kids with a sniper rifle with iron sights, or he can shit on kids with a sniper rifle with a 12 times zoom on it. For newer players to Siege, I would emphasize training the mechanical aim first 
and then worrying about optics levels attachments blah 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 all of that crap like later on because it's just it, like it reduces the amount of variables if you just like find one thing that you want to use and then just do it again and again and again and again until you feel comfortable with it because if your mechanical aim isn't really that developed all of this stuff isn't going to matter like different attachment oh i need to use i don't know if i want to use hollow or acog or foregrip blah 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 right like all of this min and maxing this is all min and maxing like oh should i use oh gee i don't uh well it, this works with that i mean maybe i don't uh it's like what about the comp well you know this site like all of this is just gonna not do anything for you unless you've developed enough mechanical aim to the point where these changes are going to be observable and sometimes they won't even be observable if you have good enough mechanical aim because if you have good enough mechanical aim then it it's not really gonna matter that much so an example of a situation in which i think habana with an acog is a good idea is for an attic take on oregon nine times out of ten obviously this wall is going to be reinforced but i'm just doing this as a demonstration right so you open up the wall and then you're going to drone it out you know usually you'll have uh you'll have a flank drone i hope you have a flank drone you should uh at least down here uh covering like maybe the tower flank and then the kitchen flank as well you're going to drone it out. Hopefully you have a teammate on the right side uh, getting control of this window here to make it a little bit easier. And then you're going to see this is open. You're going to see somebody holding an angle from the top of the bunk bed to here. And there's going to be someone holding an angle here. And he's just going to sit pretty and look at that and make sure that you don't peek it. And live to tell the tale. And if you don't have an ACOG, uh, this... You know, this gunfight's a, a little more difficult. Maybe if you play Habana a lot more passively, then yeah, just, you know, run run ACOG foregrip or ACOG angled. I don't know. Maybe you're, uh, maybe you're just nuts like that. But what I do... Why did the audio go away? What? What? What the hell? But if you're still hella confused and, and don't, you know, you're like, hey, Greg, that's all great, but I still don't know what the hell, I, what kind of optic I want to use. Just think of it like this, right? Here's, here's a general rule of thumb. If you're playing more passive, lawn angle holding operators like Nomad, who usually plays as a flex, and she's going to be watching people's flanks, then maybe you want to use the 1.5 or even the ACOG. Because you're not going to do a lot of aggro play with Nomad, right? You're not going to do a lot of room clearing. She's balanced in this way deliberately because her gadget is like one of the best in the game. If Nomad had an angled grip gun with like a super high fire rate and and no recoil, she'd be she'd be busted. That's that's why they gave her a gun that you can't put any other grip on and you know slow rate of fire, right? Because this is because this is usually what Nomad's gonna do on a map like Consulate, right? Like here's the the projector run out, and then she's gonna. Let's say they're doing a garage take, right? Like, your teammates are going to go for garage. They're going to be over here. And then you want to make sure that they don't get flanked from yellow or piano. So you shoot open these. So you have a sight line. And then you can just kind of chill behind this piece of cover here. And, you know, make sure people don't play yellow stairs. Cut off the rotate because... This map, Consulate in particular, is uh, is pretty much controlled by the staircases and uh, the hatch drops for the roamers. Now, fortunately for you, uh, ever since this new update, Rainbow Six Siege has added a whole bunch of different sensitivity sliders. So you don't have to uh, basically play on a new sense for every type of scope. What I've done to make my life a little bit easier is I've just set every single... Uh, optic to the same level of like mouse movement right it's not relative so even though i have zofia's pistol right if i do a 180 with the pistol okay i can get zofia's two times scope same amount of mouse movement one to one 
I haven't changed my scents in maybe a year. Little, little over a year, I think I've been using the same scents. Stop changing your scents. There are so many things that happen before you take a gunfight that determine whether or not you are going to lose that gunfight um, before you even line up the shot. It's not really a game about getting frags. It's, it's not Call of Duty. Um, the, the, the game is not, the game objective is not so much begoted by fragging out as much as a game like Call of Duty. Because there's literally so many other things, just talking from my personal perspective, so many things that I can improve as a Siege player, aside from my aim, that I believe would be more beneficial. So stop worrying so much about attachments and crap and just, you know, just go into the and just, just, just do it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know if it helped you out, like, and subscribe, uh, and blah, blah, do the, do the thing with stuff. All right. Peace out. Deuces. Yeah.